<laughs> Welcome to Power Code Music. In this presentation, we're going to talk about seven things digital audio workstation users should know. If you're a beginner with software digital audio workstations or an advanced user just looking to reconfirm, then you've landed in the right place. We know that digital audio workstations or DAWs are the standard in most professional and home recording studios today. Many of these software applications are powerful with virtually no limits on what you can do to your music. Now it's important to note that this level and type of power comes at a significant cost even if the software is given away for free. Both professional and non-professional DAW applications can be very complicated to understand and use for many people with varying results. With this, once many people find a simple workflow to record their music, they often stay in their lanes. They only use a small fraction of the features and functionality of their DAWs while still managing ongoing hardware and software system changes. I've used a software DAW application in my home studio previously for years because it was the standard. These days I use a hardware digital multi-track recorder because it fits my requirements and how I work best. However, I still maintain a DAW setup for project collaborations and external projects that may require one. Now, if you are a DAW user or are planning to use one, here are seven important things you should know if you don't already. Number one, digital audio workstations are a journey, not a destination. DAWs are an ever-changing landscape of hardware and software updates with each being released on a regular basis. Depending upon the brand of DAW, some updates are free but many are not. Professional DAW update licenses and subscriptions can be expensive and their business models are designed to keep you paying. So don't be surprised if and when prices go up because they will. We know that PC system operating updates can make changes that break software drivers and change configuration settings that are required for DAWs to operate properly. The result can even make hardware devices like USB mixers or audio interfaces incompatible with your current operating system in some cases. Now with this, the ability to troubleshoot minor and advanced PC issues is important. Number two. DAWs are designed to work on systems that are not created to record music. Hardware digital audio multi-track recorders are designed and built from the ground up to record music. PCs and laptops are not. They require a number of PC hardware and software configurations that include some sort of audio interface device. Also, built-in PC audio inputs and outputs are often made of cheap components that don't meet suggested audio recording specifications. Take time to become familiar with the details of the following. Be familiar with your PCOS hardware and driver compatibility as it relates to audio interface units and devices that can act as control surfaces. Understand the best startup and shutdown sequences for your PC and connected hardware devices. Now this is going to ensure the best possible initialization and operation of your system. If you're using Windows, then the sleep settings are important. And this is because when your OS system wakes up, sometimes system drivers can't be found, forcing you to restart the system. Cables used for PC connections are also important. It's strongly recommended that you use the best cables for your connections that you can afford. Number three, let's discuss the recommended DAW system power initialization sequence. There's a specific order that you should use when turning your DAW system on. This is designed to ensure that all the units in the system can talk to each other. Let's go over the recommended DAW system power initialization sequence. First, ensure that your audio interface is connected to your PC. If you use a powered USB hub, 
ensure that it's plugged into an electrical outlet. If your audio interface connections are correct, then turn on that device. Power on the rest of your MIDI and or USB connected devices. Next, turn on your PC. And finally, ensure that all volume levels are turned down and then power on your studio monitors or speakers. Now, when powering down your DAW system, just simply do the reverse. Number four, buy the best hardware you can afford. Digital audio workstation hardware is like customer service. Quality matters. A good thing to remember is that DAW systems are only as good as their weakest link. It's strongly suggested that you use the best recommended hardware and cables you can afford for your brand of DAW that you use. Don't waste your money on the cheap stuff. Ignore this warning and suffer the consequences. Number five, USB hubs. Standard PC software DAW system setups require external hardware connections. Naturally, this includes USB hubs. Now, USB hubs allow many compatible external units to use the same USB port on a PC. Whenever possible, you should connect your USB audio devices directly to your PC for your DAW setup. Now, this is especially true for USB audio interfaces. It's suggested that you do not plug your audio interface into USB hubs because they may not work properly. Now, I've had this issue myself. However, if you must do this, then use a highly rated USB hub that has its own power supply. Number six, audio latency. Everybody's favorite topic. Now this occurs when a digital audio playback signal is affected by an unwanted delayed response time. Audio latency is often created by a lack of or poor computing resources which slows down a PC's ability to manage audio processing correctly. Many folks believe that the cause is isolated to one or two areas of their system only. Now in reality, Virtually every part of a DAW setup can invoke and add to audio latency. This is a major reason why using good external hardware and proper system configurations are paramount. When it comes to audio latency, understand how your PC processes DAW system audio signals. First, the audio signal passes through an analog to digital converter to turn the audio signal into digital data. The data then travels through a bus and enters an input buffer. The computer's processor then manages this data along with all the other software application processes that are running at the same time on the PC. After processing the audio signal and its related data, that information is then sent to an output buffer. From there, the data is sent back through a digital to analog converter to change it back into a non-digital audio signal. This is a major reason why older PCs and PCs with less resources struggle to keep up. For better performance and reliability, consider isolating your DAW system from your gaming, work, and household PC. With each external device connected to your DAW system, such as USB audio interfaces, USB hubs, control surface hardware, and MIDI units and more, audio latency increases. See, the more devices you have in your setup, the longer it takes for audio signals to reach their destinations due to additional device processing and rerouting. Last but not least is number seven, using ASIO for all in regards to Windows users. Stock generic audio drivers shipped with your Windows OS are not recommended for professional audio production. The ASIO for all driver software is created and optimized for Windows audio production. Now this driver operates much better than the generic drivers when recording audio 
for your, your Windows OS. Now, when using the ASIO for all software, after it's installed and invoked, use the offline settings to select which playback devices to use with your DAW and other audio applications. When it comes to Macs, they don't require ASIO for all installation. You see, Macs use audio drivers called Core Audio. This makes ASIO for all unnecessary for Mac users. In summary, we know that both good and comprehensive digital audio workstation design, purchase, setup, configuration, management, and maintenance are vast topics that are not for the faint of heart. The topics covered in this presentation relate to some of the most common DAW questions I've encountered over time. With an ever-changing audio industry computer-based landscape, there's always new DAW-related information you must learn to survive. With digital audio workstation systems, ignorance is never the answer. <laughs> well, my friends, that's a wrap. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and click the subscribe button on your screen now to join our group. We have new presentations coming out every 7 to 14 days, and we'd love to have you be a part of our team. Also, leave a comment in the comment section below. Let us know what you think about this video. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify. Now, while you're here, listen to some of the music, check out some of the other videos, and let us know what you think about that too, especially the playlists. They're designed just for you. Thank you so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you soon.